Transmission-based precautions are to be used in conjunction with standard precautions when providing care to patients. Jane has recently been admitted with suspected viral gastroenteritis and has been placed in enteric precautions. To reduce the risk of transmission of infectious agents between the patient, the healthcare worker, other patients and the environment. <coughs> the personal protective equipment or PPE required should be readily available on a trolley outside the patient's room for all staff to access. This includes alcohol-based hand rub, an adequate supply of alcohol impregnated cleaning wipes and sodium hypochlorite a selection of disposable gowns, protective eyewear to be worn over prescription eyeglasses as well, a general waste bin large enough to dispose of the contaminated personal protective equipment after use. Alicia arrives outside Jane's room and notes the specific isolation signage. It is important to put the PPE on in the correct order and especially important to remove it in the correct order so that you reduce the risk of contaminating oneself, your colleagues, other patients and the clinical environment. Hand hygiene is the first step when commencing any type of procedure, ensuring that the alcohol-based hand rub is allowed to dry before proceeding. It is important that the staff member selects the most appropriate gown for the type of isolation that the patient is requiring for their current condition. There are two choices, a non-impervious or impervious gown. With the impervious one selected when there is a significant risk of exposure to blood or bodily fluids. In this instance, an impervious gown is selected, ensuring the gown is tied up at the back. Alicia chose this type of gown as the patient is actively vomiting with viral gastroenteritis and this poses a potential splash risk. Protective eyewear will be required. These are also to be worn over prescription glasses. You can now enter the patient's room using a non-touch technique. Once inside the patient's room, hand hygiene is performed again and is always to be performed prior to applying gloves of any kind. Non-sterile gloves are applied ensuring that the cuffs of the gown are tucked in under the gloves to make sure that there is no skin exposed. Alicia can now have contact with the patient and the patient's environment. Just a tourniquet to go on your arm there. After immediate disposal of used sharps equipment into a sharps container at point of care, Alicia can now exit the patient's room. Alright, I'm just going to send these bloods off and then I'll be back with something for the nausea, okay? Alright, I'll be back very shortly. Thank you. No worries. Alicia removes her gloves as they are likely to be the most contaminated item. Hand hygiene is then performed. Next, Alicia removes her gown. In order to reduce the risk of contaminating herself, it is important that the gown is removed by untying the gown at the back and then lifting off at the shoulders. As it is not blood stained, it can be disposed of in the general waste. Hand hygiene is performed prior to removing the protective eyewear.
As these can be used again, it is important to ensure that they are wiped down with the alcohol impregnated cleaning wipes before they are returned for future use. This also applies to any shared patient equipment removed from the patient's room. During the course of your work at Alfred Health, we have a commitment to use personal protective equipment when providing care to all our patients.